All right, so we're gonna be jumping into the front squat today. As you saw, Alex's front squat looks pretty good, but he's running into a lot of issues that are very, very common. First thing about a front squat, you wanna make sure if you have the necessary mobility and stability in your upper back. How do you determine that? All right, let's get into that full front rack position again. Let's okay. see. So usually I'll have him start hands outside of his shoulders. So this is good, right? So stand up. If you were to look from the side, if you wanna check this out, what you're gonna see here is he's kind of stacked, right? With his pelvis in his rib cage. But what he's not doing is he's not necessarily bringing those elbows forward and up enough. But as you see, as soon as he starts driving those elbows forward, he loses some of that, some of that thoracic spine and loses that upper back tension. So rack for me. Obviously, if your goal is to be an Olympic weightlifter, you probably won't be listening to me anyway, and that's probably for the best. But if your goal is to get into a better front rack position, you are obviously going to need to work on that mobility and that stability in that shoulder, right? But for right now, say we're in a time crunch and we need to get him front squatting. One of the things you can do is drop a couple fingers off. So right there, he was going with four fingers. On this one, only try two. Because realistically, where that front squat is sitting is going to be on, there you go. It's essentially going to be on the front of your chest and right on those front delts, right? So you're making a shelf. As you can see, by taking out some of those fingers, he's allowing for better positioning of his upper back, better positioning of his elbows, and the weight is sitting on his midfoot. So the idea is that the weight should be settled on the middle of his foot and right in his center of mass. So this is a pretty decent position. So step back out and let's just see what a rep looks like. Okay, that's not terrible. That looks better than before. If you notice, he's sitting more upright. Bring those feet in just a little bit, right? Now think about driving forward with your knees first. Knees, then hips. Good. Back up a little bit. I don't want you to hit those, that Jacob. Same thing, knees. So if you're noticing, so you can rack it. At the very bottom of that mo movement, his hips tucking underneath. I would have to say that, I mean, based on your height, he's squatting a long way down, right? You're like 6'2". I had no idea they stack shit that high. But, so what we want to really focus in on is the positions that he can find himself in without his form breaking. If you notice with that better grip, with that better upper back situation, better front rack position, he was able to remain more upright. All right, so what I wanna show you now is if you cannot get into that position, if for most meatheads, you're not gonna be able to get into that position right away, that's gonna be something that you have to work on. The second way we do front squats is called the old genie grip. So it's where you almost like, or the bodybuilder grip. You stand, putting the bar in that crossed arm position, building that shelf. Good, take a step back. And what I want you to think about in this position, it's going to be easier to get your elbows higher, but what we don't want to do is drive our elbows so high that it screws up our lower back or opens up our rib cage. You want to be focusing in on locking that rib cage down. So you want to think about elbows, not only up, but also out, creating that shelf for that bar to sit. So in comparison, this one is going to be sitting in a better position because he has the mobility to get into this position. So let's, let's watch him from the side. Same idea. Now that he's not even really worrying about that bar position, now he can just focus on the squat. Not too bad. You still see a little bit of butt wink at the bottom, which is, it is what it is for right now. Not too bad. Give me one more. Good. Rest, we'll rack it. So again, not so bad, right? So. To be fair, Alex really didn't do much of a, a primer or a warm up going into this. And as you can see, he's actually doing better and better with each rep. His, his movement quality is getting better and he's just getting more warmed up. And that's something you'll have to kind of work with your own clients or work with yourself 
is you realize that you may not be naturally gifted to just fall into a perfect front squat and you may need to take some sets to really warm up and kind of grease the groove. Uh, third grip that I want to go over that I think is super important. If you don't want to just, if you're not a bodybuilder that's just looking to build quads or you're trying to get into that front rack position and stabilize utilizing that upper back, we utilize straps. So these are just regular wrist straps, right? All you have to do is undo them like this, put them over the bar, cinch them down, nice and tight. So what this does, this is giving you essentially handles to hold onto the bar. And this is a nice go between, between your ability to get into that full rack, front rack position and you not being able to get into that front rack position. So what you're gonna do, I grab just about halfway, I give them a wrap. Now you're holding onto these tight, right? So now you can get into that solid front rack position. And now you're in a much more stable position where you have the handles and you can kind of practice that front rack without having the mobility to get into that front rack position. So this is a much better version. And this is something I would have my clients do if they're gonna be doing front squats and they can't get into that position because it allows you to train the same position which you'll be perfecting over time with your mobility work without having to default to that new hand, that kind of a genie grip. So Alex, let's get in here and try that. Good, take a step out. As you see here, he's practicing that same position. He's able to get into a much better front squat position, that closer to that front rack, and he's still able to stabilize into that upper back, getting his lats involved, driving those elbows forward and holding up. And now let's see a couple reps. Good. Good, perfect. Let's rack it. So besides the grip, besides trying to really focus in on keeping that rib cage locked down on top of that pelvis, you may have heard me say earlier that I wanted him to initiate with the knees. Anytime you're holding a weight in front of you, like a front squat or maybe a counterbalance squat, the farther it is forward, the more you have to initiate with the knees and then sink the hips into it, okay? I know it's gonna sound crazy, I know it sounds funky, and I know I'm probably gonna get ripped apart on the internet, but I don't give a shit because this is how you need to be doing a front squat. You need to allow those knees to travel forward and you need to be able to sit more straight up and down. So let's just demonstrate, just get into whatever. You can use the straps, you can go without, whatever you wanna do. And he's fucking dabbing over here, what a creep. Oh my God. <laughs> I can't believe you just said that. <laughs> Here we go. All right. So the same thing, lock it in. What we want to focus in on is for Alex, I want to put your feet a little bit closer in. Good. Because this is not a back squat, this is a front squat. We need to have those knees travel forward to make way for the hips to have enough clearance to be able to sink into a good position. So Alex is going to initiate with a solid brace, keeping that locked in and thinking knees, then hips, sinking deep. Good, driving it up. And when you're coming up, you wanna think of driving your chest into the bar, elbows to the ceiling. Not too bad. He has a little bit of that butt wink, but that's all right. So I now what I want you to do, mm -hmm. straighten those feet out a little bit and let those knees, even more. There you go. Now let those knees really travel over those toes. Sink, sink, sink. Good. That's better. Give me one more. Lock it. Good. Awesome. Rack it. As you can see, this is not a back squat. This is not just a back squat that you do by having the bar in front of you, right? Like this is just an entirely different exercise and it needs to be trained as such. This is more quad dominant. You're gonna get more out of your quads than you will out of your hamstrings. Um, the, like I said before, the farther a weight is in front of you, the more knee travel you need to have to make sure that it's in that center of mass or that center of gravity. 
Um, other tips when it comes to the front squat, I like to utilize this as like a really good secondary movement after your main work or in the off season as the main work itself. Um, I really think that if you're a strong man, if you're a power lifter, you will get a ton of benefit from front squats, especially my strong men in the audience here. If you're not doing front squats, you're leaving a lot on the table when it comes to getting better at Atlas stones, getting better at carries. What we want to try to do as strong men is to build that upper back. So turn around as a strong man, this is your moneymaker, right? You need to have a nice, strong, stable upper back in order to hold on to all the odd objects in order to really stabilize those positions you're gonna find yourself in. And front squats are a great way to do that and truly should be incorporated into everybody's programming at some size, shape, or period of time. 